yeah, can you lay it out for us? What, what, for those who aren't familiar, what is the problem of other minds? Oh yeah, I mean, the short version is how do you know that other people are conscious and not just mindless automata? Yeah, right. And you know, in setting this up, usually you you make a point about how you can't actually observe people's mental states; you can only observe their physical behavior. And so, it's logically possible that that behavior would be caused by um, purely physical causes without without any mental states, yeah. right? Which you know, like may, maybe that's what happened when you have computers that are trying to simulate it, simulate human like thoughts or something. Yeah. So, um, yeah, you think, okay, so you, know, you wonder about how, um, how you could know about that. And then you think, well, maybe there's like some kind of inductive argument or something like, you know, I look at what physical states cause my mental states. And then I see those physical states happen to another person mm -hmm. like, okay, so maybe that will cause the same mental states in them. You know, but then that that seems like a really weak argument, you know, because you only have one person that you've observed the mental states of. Yeah, it's an inductive yeah. argument from a single case, which is yeah. not the best to use. It seems like, as a matter of fact, the worst inductive <laughs> argument that actually counts as yeah. inductive at all. Yeah. Um, you know, and then like some people say, oh no, it's not really from one case because you can observe many occasions on which you have mental states of a particular kind. Mm -hmm. So it's many cases in some sense, right? Okay, but you know, you think like, well, I mean, what if I was making, what if I was a medical researcher and I was making inferences like this, right? Uh, like I had a medical treatment and I tried it on me and it worked. And I have only ever tried on me, but don't worry, like I tried it on me 10 times, right? Like yeah. I got a cold 10 times, I tried this remedy. Like, can yeah. I now say, yeah, it's almost certainly working on everyone. Mm. <laughs> No. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Okay. So, so the move there. Yeah. You start start with yourself. I I love this problem because I think at first it's like, well, <clears throat> for for the uninitiated, it it seems silly. It's like, well, yeah, of course, other people have minds. You go, well, how do you know? You know, how how how, how do you know that? Because think about how you know that you have a mind, and then you don't get to use that evidence for me just like you're saying here and yeah and then it starts to mess with people and you think well maybe maybe i live in a computer simulation maybe maybe i'm just you know maybe i'm a solipsist and nothing really exists um yeah. which is well, I, so, yeah i mean wow. i should say like i don't take the problem to be to figure out whether there are other minds okay. that is yeah. uh i take it that we, we all believe that there are other minds and that we know it yeah and so then there's just like a puzzle as to explain how we know it right like yeah so you know, we could go through some different accounts of how you would know it and then like see how they're they face difficulties, right? And you're trying to figure out yeah. what the best account is. But you know, it's pretty puzzling. Yeah. Yeah. You make that point that this isn't uh this isn't like a skeptical worry, uh, or it, it can be, but you're not treating it that way. And it's not like the psychological uh, or developmental question of like when does a child think that other people have minds? But it's like, no, we we have this. So would you say your is your approach? Like a particularist approach saying we obviously know there are other minds so now how do we go about explaining that yeah i mean you know this fits with the rest of my sort of common sense philosophy right <laughs> like if there's something that's completely obvious then mm -hmm. you know it's not on the table to say that that thing isn't the case right yeah. let's just figure out why it's the case yeah um and you know like the the level of certainty that i have that there are other minds is extremely high yeah. Right. Like, you know, the, and, you know, any other normal person, right? Like you, tr you treat that hypothesis, you treat the hypothesis of no other minds the same way, like you would treat the brain in a vat scenario, which mm -hmm. is to say you get to completely dismiss it in normal context. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So now, you know, like one of the problems with the argument from analogy is like, it seems to only give you like a slight probability or something like that like mm -hmm. oh yeah it's kind of plausible that maybe there are other minds it doesn't explain why it's just like not even a reasonable alternative <laughs> to consider that they're mindless automata right yeah 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 it, it kind of um it kind of legitimizes the question by trying to treat it on its own terms but doing so with like super slight evidence yeah, um, yeah, that's that, you know that happens with a lot of philosophical responses to skepticism. I, I would say, <laughs> or at least some. You know, you're like, oh, yeah, yeah. the brain of that scenario. Oh, it's just too complex. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. and so like, I, no, we know this. Yeah, even if that was true, right? Like, 
that only makes it slightly worse than the real world. Yeah, I guess with the the common sense answers, some some might be easier than others. Like like uh, Moore's Moore's proof is like here's a hand, here's another one, but you, it might be a little bit different. Like here's a mind, and here's another one, and it's like well, yeah. where where is this mind? Yeah, I think, well, I I guess. <laughs> Yeah, you know, what's the Morian version of this? Like, <laughs> well, Parker has a mind, obviously, so therefore there are other minds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's good. 